photos such as this and this crop up at times from the retelling of the Second World War. These photos were an example of the Germans attempting to support uprisings against British rule where possible, one such location being in India, the crown jewel of the British Empire. Independence movements saw this as a golden opportunity to rid themselves of British imperialism, and over 4,500 Indians would join the German army to further their independence goals. The Indian Legion was born, and in this video, we'll be covering its history and the part it played in the Second World War. The Axis powers attempted to use any pre-existing unrest to try and advance their own goals. Here, the unrest from sections of the populace would be exploited in the crown jewel of the British Empire, India. India had a rather active independence movement, one which had already been exploited to some degree during the First World War, with Germany giving funding and support to an armed mutiny of Indian nationals across Asia. As World War II drew on, the same plan would be implemented by all major Axis powers, with them giving support in some fashion to uprisings against the British, which included raising dedicated Indian military units. Here, the Axis would see support from a few members of the Indian National Congress, the lead organization leading the struggle for Indian independence. The British had declared India as a co-belligerent against the Axis powers, without consulting the Indian people or the Congress first. While most members would later signal conditional support for the war against fascism, others such as former President Subhash Chandar Bose were outraged and would stage anti-British protests around the nation, as he had long held views that more direct action should be taken against British imperialism. For his protests, he would be arrested in June of 1940 and kept under strict house watch. He would escape in early January of 41, heading north into the Soviet Union, where he hoped that he could drum up support to start a pro-Indian, anti-British radio broadcast, with the goal of eventually creating an army to fight against the British. Reaching no agreement with Moscow, Boss would go to Berlin in April of 41 with the same plea, and somewhat surprisingly to Boss, both Foreign Minister Joachim von Rittentop and Hitler signaled their support for his idea, giving him funds and logistical support to put his plan into motion. From here, he would establish the Assad Hind radio station, which commenced broadcasting on shortwave frequencies, reaching tens of thousands of Indians. Soon after, Bulls would get the go-ahead to start forming an Indian Legion, that he hoped could be used to trigger the downfall of the British Raj. The first men of this new legion came from POWs, taken after the battles surrounding Tobruk in North Africa. 27 POWs would be recruited as potential officers, and flown to Berlin in May of 41, primarily to act as recruiters from the thousands of prisoners that were being transferred to Germany. While the turnover rate was very low, over 20,000 Indians would become prisoners of the Germans, and the number of defectors gradually grew. As the Legion grew in size, they would be transferred to Konsbrock to get their training and their official uniforms. They would be issued the standard Wehrmacht uniform, and on their right upper arm was a badge in the shape of a shield, with three horizontal stripes of saffron, white, and green, featuring a leaping tiger. Additionally, Friaz Indian was inscribed in black above the tricolor. Sikhs in the Legion were permitted to wear a turban as dictated by the religion, instead of the usual peaked field cap as well. The formation of the Indian Legion would be announced in January of 42, though it wouldn't be formed until late August of the same year. Bulls had managed to attain a number of concessions from German High Command in regard to the Indian troops. They were to be given equal pay and weapons training as regular soldiers, they were not to be mixed with other German units, and they were to only to be deployed against the British. All total, by the end of 42, the Legion had a maximum strength of 4,500 men, 
most of them being deployed along the Atlantic seawall as they received training. With the German failures both in North Africa and in the East, Boss himself knew that any hopes of a combined Indo-German invasion via Persia was out of the window. And so he, along with most of his staff, would be transferred to Japanese-occupied Singapore, helping to create the Indian National Army and the provisional Assad Hind government in Japanese-occupied India, but those will be covered in a future video. The Legion would be stationed in Zeeland in the Netherlands in April of 1943, then later transferred to Bordeaux in France in September. When the D-Day landings commenced, the Legion was tasked with fighting against local French resistance units until being pulled back in August. 25 of the Legions would desert to the resistance during this time, on the condition that they would eventually be handed over to Allied command. On August the 8th, the Legion would be transferred over to the Waffen SS, being renamed to the Indlisch Freiwilligen Legion, the Waffen SS, and were ordered to retreat back to Germany. They would fight French regulars at the town of Don on August the 18th, American armor at Neut Saint Jean's, and French resistance all along the way, reaching Staten am Klatte Market just as winter drew in, and there they would stay until the coming spring. With the fall of Germany on the horizon, the Legion would make a trek along St. Constance, attempting to enter Switzerland via the Alpine passes, but Swiss border guards refused to let them enter, so they were instead forced to surrender to American and French Moroccan forces. Though those of the Legion, and even the much larger INA, very few faced severe punishment, while many of the regular soldiers faced limited, if any, punishment for their role in the war. 